Hello everyone and welcome to episode 4. I'm Gabe, and today we'll be heading down Route 3 and running into the evil team of the region. Oh, also, be sure to stick around to the end, as I'll have a prompt for more Pokémon suggestions. But before we get started, here's a quick recap. In the last episode, you passed through Route 2, showed your progress to Professor Ginkgo, and made it to Salur City. You discovered that the Evolution Research Center there was recently attacked, but a pleasant researcher gave you an Eevee and hinted that additional evolution types are possible here in the Paleon region. Route 3 twists up through a cold mountain pass. Wind and snow bite at your face, but you keep your eyes peeled for new Pokémon. You're certain that the researcher in the last town said that Eevee was the only outside Pokémon allowed in this region, but in the distance you see a familiar silhouette. Getting closer, you see a very chilly Meowth. Yes, we have a primal form for Meowth. Honestly, when Meowth got original form in Sun and Moon, I was like, okay, cool. I, mean, I didn't really care all that much. It was fine. But when it got a Galar form, I was like, okay, this is a silly trope and I like it. So yeah, I had to do my own regional form. Now, I had set a goal for myself with this region to include all of the currently unused type combinations. So that is why our Meowth will start out as a normal ice type though that normal typing will change when it evolves into Persian. Uh, I'd actually love to hear your predictions on where this design will go and what that second typing may be down in the comments below. This design fell into place pretty quickly once I knew I wanted to swap its gem right for an ice crystal uh, and that it would have a large tuft of fur that it was struggling to use to keep warm. Um, the color palette was also pretty apparent. Oh, and I tried to mimic the regular form's color palette in its shiny, like I do with the other primal forms. And here is Primal Meowth, the Scratch Cat Pokemon. This primal form of Meowth lived in frigid temperatures, but does not seem to be particularly well adapted. Its fuzzy paws help keep it warm, but most of its body is covered in short fur. Unfortunately, it seems that this shivering Pokemon struggles to stay warm due to its ice typing. Its ability is Fur Coat, that reduces all damage taken from physical types, and that's pretty good because its normal ice type is objectively kind of terrible. Like, I mean, all ice types. Horribly unbalanced typing. Fur Coat will help a little bit. And you know, wanting to take the feline somewhere warmer, you decide to capture the poor little ice type. Continuing on, you nearly trip over a new Pokemon. What you assumed was just a rock turns up and looks at you. Alright, time for another rock type. Uh, again, all of the existing fossil type Pokemon are losing their rock typing, so we need some fun designs to fill in the decks. This is also really interesting because this gets to be our first design that isn't based on a prehistoric animal. Instead, I'll have a few Pokemon that are based on prehistoric concepts, tools, and stuff like that. Actually, I'll ask later in the video for some new Pokemon ideas, so keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be an animal. Anyway, this is based on early tools, specifically the process of striking flakes from a stone to create a cutting edge. This will be a three-stage line, so I knew this design was going to need to start out very small and adorable. In fact, it's little more than a head with tiny little pebble legs. I made sure to get the kind of strike-like indentation on the face to give it some asymmetry and some character. Oh, and for its shiny, I decided it would be gold! So perhaps it could look like a, a gold nugget item in the wild? That would be a pretty bizarre, amazing way to find a shiny. Anyway, this is Chippet, the cracked Pokemon. This clumsy Pokemon is constantly falling over and running into things. It's quite brittle and loses small pieces regularly. 
Luckily, it builds itself back up by eating dirt and rocks. This process leaves Chippet with rough edges that it utilizes in battle. Its ability is something I'm calling Sharp Armor. When it gets hit, physical attacks lower its defense, but greatly raise its attack. Yeah, so if it, if it can take a few hits, it'll get super strong. Chippet rolls right up to you and insists that you catch it. Up ahead, you see a pair of people antagonizing a researcher, and the researcher's particularly terrified Pokemon. Okay, time for another fun one. Uh, this may appear to be another primal form, but it's not. Instead, we're treating this little monkey as the ancestor of the other elemental monkeys, so Pansage, Panseer, Panpora. Now that trio has kind of two main inspirations that we're going to play off also. First, it's the, the see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil thing. And when there's a fourth monkey, it's usually do no evil. So we're going to run with that. And the second idea is that the monkey's evolutions, they're based on like youthful subcultures, street gangs and the likes. So we'll follow that as well. Now, those concepts won't really come into play until the evolution. So for now, you just need to know that it starts out as a mono fairy type. In particular, I wanted the design to feel quite defenseless and scared. I think the pose communicates that pretty well. This is Panfear, the frightened Pokemon. Panfear is likely to be the ancestor to the elemental monkeys. It is quite weary of other Pokemon and prefers to be left alone. They avoid all confrontation when able. Only when a Panfear understands their trainer isn't a threat are they willing to battle. Uh, and like all the other elemental monkeys, it gets gluttony as its ability. Hey, give us that Panfear. It's coming with us. You researchers need to just stay out of our way or else. Yeah, we're Team Arc. And we're here to liberate these Pokemon! We take what we want, so give us the Pokemon, or pay the consequences. You jump into action and battle the two Team Arc Grunts. They use Marsipa, Kabuto, and Chippet. But luckily, you are able to defeat them. What the heck? Who are you? We'll be back for these Pokemon later! It seems that the Paleon region has some kind of organized team causing trouble. Let's hope that was the worst of it. With the grunts scared off, the researcher thanks you and offers to give you their Panfear. The scared little Pokemon looks excited to travel with a strong trainer, and you take it with you. You do make a note, there are very few trainers in this region. You've run into a couple here and there, but on the whole, the Paleon region is very sparsely populated, so don't expect too many random battles. Uh, oh, alright, quick segue. I had a really fun time creating new Pokémon based on your suggestions, and I would love to do more of that. So, taking a look at our Pokémon types for the region, I could really use another Dark-type Pokémon. I would love to hear any ideas that you have. It should be either a prehistoric animal or a concept tied to prehistory in some way. Let me know what you're thinking down in the comments below, and it may make it into the next video. Alright, you climb up the gradual slope until you are able to look down on the rest of Route 3 and the little settlement beyond. But that will have to wait until the next episode. Thank you all so much for watching, and please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. As always, I would love to hear your thoughts on today's episode, along with suggestions for the next design down in the comments below. Oh, and a huge thank you to my friends Hunter and Amuda for playing our Team Arc Grunts. I am sure we will run into them a whole bunch in the future. I'll see you in Episode 5. Bye!